Hello and welcome to Basic Remote Training 101 for Beginners. Today you'll be learning the basic setup, part one and part two. Here is one of my clients who's going to learn how to use the remote trainer when greeting and meeting at the front door. Hello. Whoa. What do we got here? Oh, you want to grab that, huh? Oh, you don't grab that. How you doing? How you doing? Hello and welcome. Mr. Bob Staples, the owner of Bob's Pet Stop In-Home Dog Behavior Training. I hope you enjoy today's dog training lesson and please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thanks so much and enjoy. Thanks for having me. It's so great to come to your house and see this dog of yours growing up and doing so well with this training. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to just take a step further do some advanced training. A lot of my clients do that and I always suggest people are interested in doing off-leash training. Off-leash training means you don't need to hold a leash or run to a leash every time you do something. So we're going to be using today with the Sport Dog 425. Um, it, it's a product that I really like and I recommend because it's uh, very reliable. It has a 400 yard range. So if you're working with your dog out in the field or park, you want to have some fun, you have to worry about losing your ability to communicate the signals. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great trainer. There's no batteries involved. You just plug it in every three to six weeks when it needs it and uh, recharging, should I say. Mm -hmm. And, um, and anytime you have any questions, feel free to call me. Okay, there's a 30 day warranty. If there's any problems with this, call me and I'll come and deliver another one to you. It has a two year warning to the product itself. Your dog can go swimming with it. So if we do some swimming lessons, he can use it in the water, the water sport training. They'll use the remotes as well. There's three common signals that this will, this will give. Uh, one signal is an audible signal. The audible signal could be used as a way to uh, give the dog a positive marker. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're using the, the tone as a treat. Sometimes trainers will use the tone connected to the treat and that can be a way. It also gives a pager option like your telephone where it vibrates. The vibration could also be another type of signal. Um, so three common signals, static, pager, audible. You pick and choose how you want to set it up. Mm -hmm. If families have invisible fence, we usually recommend that the audible would be a warning if the dog's in a situation where they're getting into plants or barking or digging a hole. Just get the dog a beep and that's going to stop a behavior because it mimics what folks have invisible fences, collar does, mm -hmm. those type of technologies. Um, if not, then we can set it up how you want to. Now, this is just another tool in your toolbox. It's not supposed to be a crutch. This is really trying to empower your verbal commands. Right. So if your dog knows commands, basic commands, mm -hmm. and you're able to use it for that, great. If your dog doesn't know, don't expect this to teach your dog mm -hmm. to know something they don't know. Right. Plus, we always make sure that nobody uses these collars and uh, kids and uh, family members, anybody who's not familiar, we always tell them not to do that mm -hmm. with as well. I love setting families up with the remotes because when they're used correctly, they are amazing. Mm -hmm. I've had families that I've had um, gone through a lot of training and nobody's really mentioned to them the remote training. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there are a lot of trainers uh, interested in learning about it. I know that many years ago they were shock collars and basically it turned me off. Wasn't interested. So I kind of jumped ship and stepped away from it in the early 80s. And then I came back in the 90s after I saw some amazing demonstrations where the remote trainers were being used to work with dogs from service, agility, protection, obedience, field trials, just all kinds of wonderful things. All right, so far so good. So we have uh, a little sticker on here. This is very important that you understand. And that's with everybody that has any type of electronic anything to help with their dog's training. Like Invisible Fence, we don't like the collars left on our dogs for prolonged periods of time in the snug position, like a pair of shoes. Yeah. It's going to develop what they call pressure sores or pressure necosis. So what I suggest that families do is when they're home during the weekend, wake up, put the collar on. Now, we're going to put a piece of tape on the collar itself so we know exactly where the correct hole is. So if you put this on the dog, and let's say you're not going to be active at all, but you want to turn it on and put it on the dog. You don't have to put it on the snug fitted hole that we're going to mark. It can be three holes looser. So now it's just on the dog basically doing nothing. Okay. We still have the option to use the audible signal, which is on the side. Mm -hmm. 
and or the vibration where it says VT. That means that we can still give the dog a signal even when the collar is loose. And that's important to understand. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of neat. You can still communicate with it. Um, I like this collar a lot because it's durable. It's nylon impregnated with like a plastic coating. So it doesn't fall apart. It has a great life. You're not going to find a problem with this. So we will cut this because it is a little large. And I love to see the buckles on top of the dog's neck. So if you have it on your dog and you're not sure what fitted position it's in, you can take a peek and say, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to be leaving. Let me loosen this collar up. I'm not going to be back for four or five hours. Yeah. So you can loosen the collar up without taking it off. Years ago, we used to take collars off, remote trainers, uh, and dogs would misbehave. We put the collars on, the dogs would behave. I don't want the collars to have that much power. I'd really like your, your verbal commands and your ability to follow through mm -hmm. that has the power, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't encourage people to take these things off as much as I encourage people to loosen them up. Okay. Okay. Um, will it hurt your dog to have it on the house? No. Um, you are using a, a plastic cage and the dog is an older dog. Um, they are really, really super safe. Now, would it hurt for you to say, you know, Bob, I would really like to take the collar off when we leave. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel more comfortable. I respect that, and, and I kind of agree in a certain sense, especially with metal cages. So that's very important that you understand that you're going to take it off, you're going to put it on top of the cage, and when you come home and you open up the cage and you're going to reach inside, you're going to put it back on, you got to be really faithful with that. Mm -hmm. Letting the dog out without the collar on is probably not a good idea because there the dog is getting a little bit of a mixed signal. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked about the importance of being as consistent as possible. So we want to make sure we pay attention to that. Okay, so that looks like when we put it on the dog, the buckle is probably going to be on top. Mm -hmm. All right, that really looks great. Now on the bottom of the collar, there is an on and off switch right here. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to use to turn the collar on. And you're going to hear two beeps, and you should be able to see mm -hmm. a blinking green light, which means it's working. I think when this gets tired, it first loses its ability to work at longer distances. But you'll generally see this light change, and I think it kind of goes amber, which is, I think, green and red together creates amber. But it basically says, I'm getting tired. Also, don't leave these on the charger like we've done with a lot of things. Oh, I just stick it on the charger all the time like a telephone. Okay. That's what I, something that I would tell you not to do. And again, there's instructions in here that everyone is supposed to read. Um, so I'm going to do the very best I can and I'm going to send you my personal training that I've written down uh, on a document that you can read as a part of our lesson today. You want to read that as well. People that work with remote trainers who are blind or deaf, then they need to know those visual signals or audible signals if they're using it for their dog's training, which is amazing. And we've done that with those type of dogs as well. These probes, you'll notice, are pretty short. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding some longer probes because we have a lot of hair and a lot of coat on the dog. If your dog was a very short-coated dog, um, like a Weimar Anna or a um, Dalmatian or a dog that has really short hair, um, we would be fine with those, those little probes. But I'm not going to suggest that we use the little ones because we really need to be consistent. So let's just pick these guys out. By the way, the, a test light comes with the system. Basically what that means is if you're not sure if it's working and you put these probes on there, this test light has two little wires that you lay across the probe. So when you press the transmitter, it'll light up to tell you that it's working. So if you're not sure if it's working, I've had families would call me and say, you know, I can see that this is working and I can see this is working, but they're not working together. Okay, and I tested it. I even put my fingers there, didn't feel anything. Then these two systems need to be matched, and we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the lesson. They'll have to be rebooted, so to speak. Okay, so grab this, put these probes in there. I generally try to discourage families going on the internet and buying these things, mainly because they really do need hands on training. Um, I've even told a lot of the vets. 
that when I do sell these to families, I really take the time to make sure I walk families through it the right way so nobody makes mistakes. We never want to hurt our dogs misusing the tool, whether it's a choker or any other tool out there. Um, we want to make sure that every tool we have in our toolbox is used correctly. You will find it will be such a helpful tool to be consistent and you'll, and you'll advance quicker because you're going to be more consistent. One of the reasons dogs misbehave is because we're so inconsistent mm -hmm. and that's uh, important to understand. But let me also take out the instructions that they give you that you can flip through and look at it. Certainly I don't mind. Um, I know that they I don't know if they do now. They might have a D yeah, they do. They have a DVD that comes with it. Okay. Um, that's why we're taping today so I can create my own video for families because I wasn't real impressed with the DVD for, for behavior training, nor did I particularly care for their style of basic training. Mm -hmm. I think you could potentially use this as a reference, and there are some real hem helpful hints in here as well. So we're going to kind of push that off to the side, and I'll try to help you with that. Yes. Um, the thing that was important to understand is, like I say to everyone, please look through the manual. Usually with the guys, um, I'll have the gals look through the manual first and what I'll say to them is get a highlighter and highlight the things that you know that are important, or whatever that may be. All the information and in preparing this and doing all these things I'm going to be doing for you today, but please look through it, just good helpful hints. And like I said to you about m matching the collars for, for any reason that the, the uh, transmitter and the remote itself isn't working, you want to go to step six, okay? Mm -hmm. Step six will help you match the collar and receiver and the transmitter of both. Okay, now, getting on to the training. I typically always suggest hiding this from the dog. I don't want the dog to see the transmitter. In other words, I'll have families say to me, Bob, all I have to do is show this to my dog and he behaves. That's not what we're really trying to do here. This is really supposed to be a very positive training tool. It's not supposed to be used in any negative way. Um, we're using it to uh, give the dog signals, whether it's because they're doing good or they made a little mistake or we're helping them understand uh, and get clarity with everything that you're giving to your dog, all your verbal commands. Let's say the dog jumps on your company, okay? If they're you know, expecting the dog to jump because you've said, hey, we're going to do dog training and they're dear friends or family members mm -hmm. and you say to them, we're actually teaching our dog not to jump. We kind of need our dog to make a mistake. If the dog jumps and you say to the dog, no, and then you press the remote, the dog will be feeling the signal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to jump down and they're going to say, good job. You can actually ask those families to go outside ring the doorbell and repeat that again. When you don't want the dog to jump on somebody, then you can step on the leash to control the dog. So pick and choose your fight. Try not to use the remote for everything. Try to let your actions and your words and the leash also play a role. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to do is get away from that. So there's a little bit of transitioning. We've done our leash work. We're trying to do our remote training work. And how do we transition the dog? It's a little bit of both in the beginning. Okay. okay? Now, Let's say the dog's digging a hole out in the back mm -hmm. and you give the dog a warning, whether it's verbally through, through your voice command or you're using the remote to give the dog a signal. That's different than the dog in the act of jumping on somebody where you really need to respond right away. The dog's doing it. You say no. You want the dog to feel it. You want it to happen in that moment. Mm -hmm. But let's say outside it's not so darn important, but you want to give the signal. I like to give the signal first and give the dog maybe a second or two to see if they respond before I just choose to use the static impulse okay. or the beeper noise or the vibration signal mm -hmm. to see how much of this dog is learning. For example, a family lets their dog out in the fenced in yard. They're not there with the dog, but they're watching the dog from afar, whether it's in the house or on a deck, and the dog starts digging a hole. Mm -hmm. Normally what I do in, in this case where a dog is digging a hole is if I'm not close enough to say stop or no, then what I'll do is I'll press the static impulse, which is the numbers. This is basically digital static, very much like the TENS units that they use in hospitals, the same basic technology, digital technology. 
where the dog would be feeling the static impulse in the act of digging. If the dog stops, then the static stops. Mm -hmm. So the dog learns if it's digging a hole and you're not be nearby to say no, the dog thinks the hole is creating and they stop. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. um, if you're outside and you say no and the dog says, I'm not going to listen to you and I don't care and continues to dig, then if you say no again, after the no word, then we press and hold the continuous button to let the dog know until you stop, you're going to be feeling the static impulse. Now, the average family, when they work with a dog, are probably going to be set, setting their remote to either level two or level three for most training. We don't really need to use the other levels unless we had a very difficult, challenging dog or the type or style of training is different. Or let's say your dog is running towards the street and you put it on four or five and you yell the dog's name and you hold it down. I've had people that have literally done that out of desperation when their dog was bolting towards the street mm -hmm. and families have called me and said, I was able to stop my dog from running into the street by yelling the dog's name, holding the continuous button down at a higher level and the moment my dog stopped, we stopped. So really what's happening is the dog starts to learn that if there's a negative behavior or there's something dangerous involved and the dog feels the static impulse and it's an annoyance to the dog, then the dog has to stop whatever it is it's doing in order to turn it off. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty cool. But it's generally connected to our voice commands or some type of signal. Mm -hmm. The digging of the hole, I'd kind of like to think that every time the dog tries to go out there and dig, it happens. So it's the act of digging is what's happening. So the dog can't figure out what the problem is. It's just the act of digging. Mm -hmm compared to a dog jumping on a counter or a person or, or your furniture, that type of thing, or mouthing or barking, whatever the case may be. Generally, you're going to be verbally giving the dog some type of direction when they make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to be trying to do. Now, this first week of training, and we always do two dog training lessons with the remote, is getting the dog familiar with the collar. I love to try to talk people in who are not going to be using invisible fence to use the audible tone signal as a positive reinforcement. Right. So what I normally do is I'll say to you it randomly, five to ten times a day, you're going to press and hold this for about one to two seconds. What I mean by it's not just for a moment, beep, I mean beep, 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 for a prolonged period of time. And then every time that happens, either say the word treat after the beep, before the beep, or just give the dog a treat. So we kind of do a combination. We say treat and beep, and then we do beep and treat, and then we say treat, or just beep, and we always give the dog a treat, and do that every day for about five to ten times a day. A little piece of kibble is all they really need. But can you imagine the average dog for two days or three days, they're hitting beep and treats. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Right? There's a yeah. correlation. Hey, mom turns the collar on in the morning, it beeps, and she gives me a treat. I like the collar. Yeah. You know, I'm off a leash. I love that. <laughs> And if I make a mistake and mom says no and I kind of don't listen to her, then mom says no again or dad says no again and I feel a little static impulse. Now I'm going to let you both feel what this feels like so you can understand that we're not trying to use anything scary or dangerous, okay? okay. This way you can make your own opinion just like everybody else has done. Many of us will judge a book by cover. I was one of those people. Okay. So you're just going to put two of your fingers on top, okay? I have it on one. And I'm going to press the top button here, which is the continuous button, okay? Do you feel that impulse? Is that scary? No. No, it's not bad, is it? All right? Okay? That's kind of really all it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be something scary or bad. Now, people will say, well, Bob, I have it on level one, and when there's no distraction, the dog listens pretty good to it. Or people will say, Bob, my dog doesn't feel anything. I've had families say to me, Bob, my dog likes it. It's like a massage. They like it. Huh. Well, if we're using the static as a way to give the dog a signal because they're making a mistake, we don't want it to be pleasurable. Mm -hmm. We want the, the tone to be pleasure. Um, so however you set up. I've had trainers that have told me, oh, Bob, we use the static to help with commands. So it's positive. And the beep is negative. Or they'll say, oh, Bob, we've used the vibration as a negative tone to tell the dog the dog's making a mistake, excuse me, a vibration, mm -hmm. and tell that the dog is making a mistake. So it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But for 
for, for my clients and for general overall use, I'm going to suggest that if you're going to use the pager and you're not going to use invisible fence, that can be a warning to tell the dog that you're making a mistake, whether you're giving them verbally or giving a pager. We can use the tone as a source of positive reinforcement, and then we can use the static to reinforce a negative behavior so the dog makes the connection. Mm -hmm. Right? If your dog's prone to jump on your company and you say to your dog, go ahead and jump, it's an appropriate time to do so. And the dog is up on the act of jumping, and let's say they feel level one or level two for a prolonged period of time, the dog has to get down to turn it off. Okay. Now, in the instructions that I'm going to be giving you, I'm also taking you through baby steps when you're a little hesitant. There's a lot of people that want to do this and they don't want to make mistakes. So what we do in those situations, and you'll read the instructions, the bottom button here is a moment of a, of a static impulse. It's what they call a nick. It's like a flick. Okay. So if the dog makes a mistake and you say no, nick, and the dog doesn't respond, then if you say no again, you can hold it for one second, one one thousand. The dog still doesn't respond, you can say no, one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four. If the dog doesn't stop at all, what is the dog telling you? Uh, it's not having an effect. Right, it's too low. Yeah. Maybe it's too much distraction. You know, we don't know what your dog's level is. Mm -hmm. That's why we're training dogs with lots of repetitions with no distractions before we introduce low, moderate, and high distraction levels of training. That's excellent. I want you to feel the pager vibration. So put that in your hand. Mm -hmm. Feel that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Either button will give you that pager when it's in the VT mode. Mm -hmm. I always like to keep this remote in the VT mode, which means it's kind of like neutral. So that the, this way, if you're going to be using the pager or not, you can always test if it's working. As you can see, that's kind of neat, like your phones. Okay, that works great. So always keep VT concerns. If you put it in your pocket and you bump it, you don't want the dog to get static, right? right? So if they get a VT, some families say, but Bob, I, I, I use the VT as a, as a positive source. Every time I give the dog a vibration page, I give the dog a little treat. It doesn't matter, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I'm gonna set it on level one just to see if the dog feels anything. So I'm gonna put it on the dog. Okay. I'm going to tap it. Remember, this is the nick button, which means it only yeah. can give the dog a quick little nick. Okay. Look at the button here, and I'm going to press the nick button. Notice how small mm -hmm. or short the nick is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it doesn't do any more than that, but the button up top, where it has a little nipple on the button, the top button is continuous. Okay. Continuous up to nine seconds, which means that for some reason, if we're to get caught or get stuck, it's going to automatically shut off. It's a great way mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't accidentally make a boo-boo, which is your encouraging. All right, let's bring that dog out and let's have some fun here. All right, look at you. All right, so we're going to size this on the dog. I'm going to go to the hole where I think it might be, and then I'm going to see how it is there. I always like to make sure, I'm going to swing the dog around so everybody can see, that we can get the collar and we can move it. So, you should be able to do that. If you can't, then it's too tight. I know, just from feeling it, that it's making a good impression. Also, we want to make sure that the collar is sitting high when it's adjusted and not low, because the low portion of the neck is fatter than the high portion. I also like to see the blinking light, as you can see. I've had families that say to me, oh, we're dogs out in the yard and it's dark, and I can see my, where my dog is because it's blinking, which is kind of neat too. So it's a nice little perk. So I want you to put your hand underneath there and kind of feel that, okay. as you can see, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now grab the actual computer itself and move it back and forth. As you can see, you can move it, but you can see that it's okay. also in good contact. Mm -hmm. So let's make a little mark right here, okay? okay? So we know that's the right hole, maybe a little marker or something like that. Now, if for some reason the dog grows in size, not a problem, right? You'll just make a slight adjustment and you'll go up a hole a little uh, larger, you know, one, one or two holes larger. Remember I said that if you're using the collar but you're not active with it and you want to leave the collar on, and we say three holes, mm -hmm. three holes would be here. Okay. Anytime you move it back that much, you've literally taken the pressure off so the dog doesn't develop a sore. Right. Now, Many professionals, let's say it's going to be on the dog for, let's say, 16 hours a day, they'll move the computer from here to here to there. And the fact that they move her means that they'll never be 
um, constant pressure in one area. That's an, that's an old trick if we're not. Now, I just loosen the collar, but just that's what was done, and that's a great way. So, uh, as you can see, now we have an exact mark hole. So, every time we put the collar on and we're going to be active with the remote, at least with the static impulse, we know that it's going to go in the same hole. As a matter of fact, on the back, I'm probably going to make a mark too, so we know the case. So, you're consistent. This is really great. Part two, our demonstration. But before we get started, let's discuss what not to do. Number one, do not use the collar to correct aggression unless you've been fully trained how to do so. Do not have anyone untrained use the remote trainer. Do not use the collar in small places like a veterinarian's office. Do not allow children or guests to touch or play with the remote trainer. Do not place the collar on the first thing in the morning and start training. Allow your dog some time to get used to wearing the collar. Do not use the remote trainer when other dogs or animals are nearby. Do not keep the collar on tight for prolonged periods of time up to 12 hours. By following these simple precautions, this will keep you and your dog out of trouble. If you have questions in regard to using, training, or educating someone about the remote trainer, please contact me at bobspetstop at gmail.com and I look forward to help out anytime that I can. So with that being said, let's get started on part two, our demonstration. So like I said, I'm going to hide the remote. Hello there, I know you like to jump on me, do you? You always do. Oh, you always do. You always, no. Thank you. You're so pretty. No. Thank you. See how the dog's looking down? Yeah. She doesn't understand what's going on. Now, we have this on level one. You felt that. Yeah. So, I'll see how little that is. Yeah. And so, level one, without distractions, working great. Mm -hmm. Very easy for the dog. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. You want to jump on me? Yes, you do. You always jump on me all the time. Even if I have something special in my hand. Oh, I really like this thing. Oh, it's mine. I want to keep it and take it home. It's mine, 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 mine. You know, a lot of times the dog will come and jump on there. Yeah. Now the dog's choosing not to jump. Yeah. That's a good girl. That's a good no. Jump the dog's looking down. Thank you. Yes, what was that? What caused that? Of course, you get confusing. Every dog's going to be a little confused. Did my tail do it? Did the ground do it? What happened? <laughs> Very good. Do we have another ball? Oh, look at that. You're so good. No? Okay. Real simple. In this case, it's a tap. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying no, then I tap, and then I'm kind of responding. So we're kind of doing more. I'm not just standing still like a robot. Right. I'm kind of engaging in this. Yeah. You're being so good. Yeah, it's good. That's good. Ready? You're going to get it? You're going to get it? Here you go. Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want that toy? Well, I got both of them now. Oh, that's so good. I know you want to jump. Hmm? Do you want to jump? Do you want to jump? Do you? Do you? I know you do. Good. There you go. There you go. You caught it yourself. Ready for the ball? Get that ball. That's good. That's so good. So good. Give me that ball. Hey, think about when family say to me, Bob, my dog jumps on the counter. Okay? No. Yes. Here's a perfect setup. There it is. There it is. That's a good job. It's your choice. No. So the dog jumps up. I say no. Then I tap and I hold that until the dog gets down. I'm not doing the kind of progression we talked about. One moment, one second, three to four seconds. I'm just continuously holding it down because they're using level one. I believe that the duration of time that the remote button is being pushed down at level one is more important, more value, and we have more success mm -hmm. than trying to put it at level two and tap it. The duration seems to be the answer. Okay. Where's that dog? Hello, look at you, look at you, and we're just having a good old time. Yes, we are, yes, we are. Yes, we are. You can jump on me if you want to. You can. I won't do a thing. No, I won't. Now, of course, you'll always hear me say no. 
But see how now the dog's making a choice not to jump? And you're going to get that because you didn't jump. There's your reward for not jumping. What, what a great way of helping dogs to, by using these tools to correct by you. Yeah, you like it. You like it. Oh, I knew you could. There you go. Go get it. Go get it. That's so good. That's so good. Give me that ball. Give it to me. I want it. It's my ball now. I got it. Do you ever have something in your hand? You're walking around the kitchen and you're afraid that your dog's going to jump on it? Yeah. Now, of course, you don't want to tease your dog by putting it in the face and taking it away. Right. You know? I'm, of course, playing. The bad guy here, I want the dog to make mistakes with me. And if I didn't want the dog to make mistakes, of course, I would probably uh, not have the dog in a situation where they're off a leash. I'd be controlling them, like you have company coming. Sometimes you want to control them. You don't want the dog to make a mistake. Yeah. But here's a perfect example for a dog to learn not to jump on me. So it connects the negative jumping to a word, an action, and a contact. I'm using free signals as well as the remote having the option of giving free signals. Okay? So let's get some treats and let's show I have a few. I don't know if that will help, but I have a, a few treats here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to beep the remote and I'm going to say the word treat so, to, so the dog understands. So I'm going to sure I got that. Treat! Now I'm not going to worry about the dog jumping because I was beeping when the dog made a mistake. Okay? So I could. Now, do this setup. Okay. You know, if that happens, no worries. This is all part of the process. You know, the dog didn't understand. Okay. If you want to jump on there, you can. I was focused on the treat. The dog says, wait a minute, I like that. <laughs> treat. Okay. Now the dog's getting a positive. Now, you don't have to give all five treats right now. Uh -huh. You can give, if you're going to do five or ten treats in a day, it can be randomly at different times. Okay. It's kind of interesting how you have to be thinking and watching what your dog's doing to determine where your hands are going to be. If your hand is focused on the button and the dog makes a mistake, you're there. But I have to use my other hand to put on the beep. So learn and feel where these things are because we want to keep this kind of away. I mean, it can be in our hand, but it can't be connected to what we're necessarily doing. Right. Okay? Treat. Go to the dog when you press the beep tone, because that's going to tell the dog, I'm confused, I don't understand. Every time I hear a beep, it's pleasurable. I know when I take my dog out for a walk uh, to the farm that I live next to, it's a big farm, and she can be off leash and run around. If I beep that collar, she'll come running, because she's going to get it on, and she knows exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going outside, and there's probably a higher chance that we're going to be going to the farm, and just letting her run and have some fun. Okay. Which is really amazing because I've been in the woods with her. She's chased after some deer. Obviously can't catch them. And then I don't know where she is. And I can just go back to our last reference point, start giving the beeps, and she'll come out of the woods searching for me. And it's amazing just yeah. because she puts two and two together. Yeah. Treat. So that's going to be your test for at least the next two days. Okay. okay? If you want to stretch it three, that's fine. Okay. It goes on. Day three or day four is where we would actually be doing what we did here today. Okay. You want to give the dog a little chance to get familiar with it, even though you saw a perfect demonstration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get the dog to jump on the counter. What else can we put up on the counter that will get the dog to jump? Oh um, uh, anything of mine. Uh, 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 Box of tissue. Chips, oh, oh. food. I know. You know, these setups are great. Dish rags, oh yeah. Dish rags are great. I love them. I love to jump on the counters to grab the dish rags. You know. You're going to have a hard time when you bring your dog out of the training crate to do these little sessions. You're going to have a hard time trying to get the dog to make mistakes. Yeah. People can take this to the extreme. Yeah. Just try to keep it practical and try to work with one thing at a time. Yeah. If you know your dog's got a problem with biting and barking and jumping and digging and so on, yeah. try to do one thing. We got, I got cut off here when the dog jumped on the counter and I was doing the beep. Yeah. So I couldn't correct that behavior. So I went over there and tried to get the dog off. This is kind of good. Okay. Okay, so there's a perfect setup for the dog to consider, hmm, do I want to take the paper? Okay. Now, could we take it this to an extreme? No. So now I'm involved. Did the, did I just do the same thing? 
Okay? Dog can make a mistake. No. So I just said no. Nope. Right there, tapped it, went to the dog. But I still use the remote to help to help the situation. It's your choice if you want to go for it. Perfect little setup. Normally your dog would go for it, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's what I thought. So your dog's not going for it. So wow. Pretty cool. So this is what you do for about 10 to 15 minutes. No? Very good. Did you see that? How simple. Good job. Good decision. Good choice. No? No? Very good. Good choice. So you almost have to let the dog almost touch it. Now, if the dog had grabbed it and ran away, you just would have said no. You would have continuously held it down and then gone and got it out of the dog's mouth and thrown it right back on the floor again. Mm -hmm. Now, if you find that level one is not working, now the dog's saying, oh, whatever, I don't care about that. Level one, what the heck is that to me? Yeah. Then you can go to level two. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But give level one a chance where yeah. you know it's not. That's a great way to, to, to see the dog's not making a, a choice. Now, the dog is allowed to have them. So if the dog gets them, I'm not doing anything. So the dog says, whoa, they're positive, they're mine. These things are not mine. This helps the dogs discern. Right. If you can't correct the dog in the act of making a mistake and correct their behavior in a gentle and safe manner, they can never discern right and wrong. Mm -hmm. No different than what the mother dog does with every puppy in the planet. Same basic theory. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. It is. Wow, that was amazing. In this setup, it's a boxer. This particular dog is a oh, big jumper. Hello. Very good setup. The dog Hello. runs back to mommy. Hello. And watch what happens me. again. Quick little tap. No. The dog feels a little tingle. Looks at me, looks at mommy, runs Very back good. for some love. Okay, let's try round two. Oh, there we go again. Quick little jump. Let's try it again. Okay, our third setup. I love there. Hey, Connor. Now, Connor is a little What's hesitant to run and jump on me. So I got What's down at first. And, and the dog yay. came running. Oh, Notice how the dog's oh, happy. Oh, and that's oh, stifled. So happy. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, that's really good. It. Now, the dog's going back for a little love from oh, mommy. good boy. He chose not to jump, so I got to give him some love. Come on over here, slobber guy. Oh, you're gonna slob all over me. I know you, I love you. I love you, I love you so much. Now that's remarkable. Okay, on to our Roman. next demonstration with the big hey, golden buddy. doodle. No, Roman. This particular dog is very physically very strong. No. It's a type of dog that's just not gonna back off real easy. So we are finding ourselves raising and uh, lowering the level excellent. of stimulation the dog yeah. was receiving. We know he's loved to jump on me. That is a lot of self-control. Normally, the dog would be jumping on me, just like the boxer. And you can see he was so frustrated. See how the dog makes a decision. Remote training is not supposed to be toxic or dangerous or bad. It's just supposed to be something that's easy for the dog to relate to. Come here, Roman. Come here, buddy. Come. Here, the setup is cleaning the dog. Watch how the dog starts playing progressively harder and more wild. No. Breaking each exercise down in little bite-sized pieces. Now, even though the dog kept on challenging her, no. we continued no. to pursue the exercise. There, the dog makes a decision. No. It comes back, looks down, no. and we keep on upping the ante with the remote trainer to allow the dog the freedom to make a choice not to do it. In this little quick demonstration, she pursues it, and let's watch the dog's progressive behavior. So you can see this is a perfect setup where yeah. we're allowing him to understand that the moment he jumps right. and he's touching you, ah, no. we're connecting your word to this action. So now he's hearing you say no, which is telling him that your no word has more power because behind the no word, he feels this little static tingle. Right. So now, we should do this. That, that's exactly right. 
you're going to be doing the same type of setup. Now you can see how mellow and calm he is. Reach down and give him some love. Yes, that's just correct. All these little setups that we're showing you, these are the same basic setups that you want to practice with your dog. Here's another one. Dogs love to jump on counters. And most of the times when these folks are preparing for the dog is jumping. This setup, we're actually going to have to leave the room just to try to see if the dog's going to do it. We have chicken, we have chips, we have bread. The dog always jumps on the counter. Let's see what happens. Now, there are a few things you need to be aware of. Sometimes you need to step away or step out of the area. As you can see, she's really letting the dog know that there's food up there. And this dog has always jumped on the counter, took things, ran away, and then they couldn't get it back. Now, when we walked away, as you can see, the dog's jumping on the counter and can feel the stimulation. No big deal. Goes over and smells it and makes a conscious decision not to do it and walks around. This dog started learning to misbehave when the family walked away and was responsive when the family was there. So we were taking this to the next level. Excellent. There's a little frustration bark. Pretty common when dogs are not getting their way when they're so used to it. This is an older dog, too. Not a young puppy. scenario what we did was we allowed the dog to jump on the counter because we know that when we leave the house they're making mistakes maybe your dog does that too if you're trying to do a setup with a remote trainer where you're out of sight from the dog's perspective this is a perfect setup make sure your dog can't successfully make a mistake if you're going to use the remote you're going to hold the remote static impulse button down the whole time the dog is jumping on the counter just remember you only have about nine seconds to do that so if your level is too low and you're holding it down and he's not responding, the dog probably saying that's too low and you need to turn it up. This particular dog can handle high level and it doesn't seem to impact him too much. I've seen dogs that actually like the experience of the static impulse, kind of like uh, a tickle, kind of feels good. So we, what we tried to do in the beginning is attach the word no and an action to these behaviors so the dog can link there's something wrong. Now we took our time today and we didn't expect too much too soon. I'm going to suggest that when you practice this three times a day, five to ten minutes with your dog, working on some of those common unwanted behaviors such as jumping, biting, uh, digging holes, barking, uh, chewing furniture, whatever the case may be. In this case it's the counter surfing. If you're in the room and the dog won't jump, outsmart them. Leave the environment and you'll do a great job. Good job, buddy. Good job. No biting, no jumping. That's what it's all about. Good well, job. that is what it's all about. Mr. Bob of Bob's Pet Stop. I hope you enjoyed our remote dog training lesson for beginners. Please feel free to contact me at bobspetstop at gmail if you'd like to set up an appointment over the phone to discuss your dog training needs. Thank you again, and I hope you have a great training day.